In this video, we learn about points of inflection. In particular, we learn what they are, as well as how to study the second derivative and its sign to find them. And I should say, I'm going to start this video by explaining what points of inflection actually are. If ever you want to skip ahead to the example in which I explain how to find a point of inflection, then I've added timestamps or chapters to this video for you to be able to skip ahead. For now though, let's get to it. Given some curve, and I'll say y equals to f of x, and I'll just draw something like this here, so that would be y equals to f of x, a point of inflection is a point at which the curve changes concavity. Looking at this quick portion of a curve I've drawn here, we can see as we go from left to right that the curve is initially concave up, and as we carry on here, it turns into a concave down curve. And somewhere along here, and I'll say right here, there's a point at which that concavity changes. That's a point of inflection. And this is connected to the function's second derivative. Because when the curve is concave up, so this portion here, the second derivative is positive. So I'll write f dash dash of x is positive. On the other hand, when the curve is concave down, like this portion here, the second derivative is negative, so f dash dash of x is negative. Consequently, since this is a smooth or continuous curve, at the point of inflection, f dash dash of x is equal to zero. So a point of inflection is a point at which the second derivative equals to zero, and as we move across that point, the second derivative changes sign, either positive to negative, like what we see here, but it could also be from negative to positive. And in fact, I'll make a quick sketch, something like this. Here we'd have another point of inflection right here, at which f dash dash of x equals to zero. And to the left of that, we can see that the curve is concave down, and that consequently the second derivative f dash dash of x must be negative. And to the right of that, we can see that the curve is concave up, and the second derivative f dash dash of x must therefore be positive here. So for the sake of defining things properly, let me quickly write that down. We say that a curve y equals to f of x has a point of inflection, has a point of inflection at say x equals to some number c if and only if two things. First of all, the second derivative at c must be equal to zero. Secondly, the second derivative f dash dash of x must change sign on either side of that point. So I'll just write f dash dash of x changes sign, changes sign across x equals to c. And although I haven't written it here, this applies to functions or portions of functions that are continuous and whose first and second derivatives are continuous as well. That being said, let's look at an example of how to find a point of inflection. Say we're given the function f of x, which equals to x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x plus 30. And if you have a graphical calculator, you can go ahead and check, but if I were to plot that function, there we go, my x and y grid, x, y, it would look something like this. There we go. Now, just looking at the sketch I made here, we can see relatively clearly that as we move from left to right, the curve is initially concave down, and then past some point around here, it turns into a concave up curve. And that tells us that somewhere around here, there must be a point of inflection. And now to actually find the x-coordinate of this point of inflection, and to prove that the concavity indeed changes on either side of it, we can follow a three-step method. And here's the idea. The first step, step one, is to find this function's second derivative. So let's go ahead. We'll have f dash of x, or f prime of x, which will equal to 3x squared minus 18x plus 12. And now differentiating a second time, we find f dash dash of x, or f double prime of x, which equals to 6x minus 18. And that's our first step done. We now have this function's second derivative. I move on, step two. And in step two, we need to find any values of x at which the second derivative equals to zero. And for that, I need to solve f dash dash of x equals to zero, which is the same thing as solving 6x minus 18 equals zero. Solving this quickly leads to 6x equals to 18, 
And now dividing both sides by 6, we find that x equals to 3. And that's the second step done. Notice here that there's only one value of x at which the second derivative equals to 0. But for many functions, you may find 2, 3, or more values of x at which it equals 0. Finally, now that we found a value of x at which the second derivative equals to 0, we need to check whether or not the second derivative changes sign across x equals to 3. Indeed, the fact that the second derivative equals to 0 is a necessary but not sufficient condition for there to be a point of inflection. The second derivative sign has to change as well. And if you need to convince yourself of that, you can go ahead and look for points of inflection for the function you see here. And you should find that the second derivative is also equal to 0 when x equals to 3, but the second derivative doesn't change sign on either side of that. Indeed, you'll find that the second derivative is positive for x values less than 3 and for x values greater than 3. And this can be seen on this function's graph from the fact that it's concave up to the left and to the right of x equals to 3. It therefore doesn't have a point of inflection. So let's see how to check that this function does indeed have a point of inflection when x equals to 3. And that brings us to step 3. Now for this I like to construct a sign table. And it's a very simple one, it has two rows. And in the top row I'm going to show the values of x and the bottom row I'll show the sign of the second derivative. Now, f of x, its derivative, and the second derivative are perfectly well defined for all real numbers. And to indicate that, I write negative infinity here and a positive infinity on the far right-hand side here to show that x can take on all the values between these two. Next, on the top row here, I add any x values at which the second derivative equals to zero. In this case, there's only one x equals to 3. And so I write that here. I'll say 3 is right there. And in fact, it splits my table into 2, like so. Now, as we've seen, when x equals to 3, the second derivative equals to 0. And so I write a 0 right there. Now we look into whether the second derivative is positive or negative on either side of x equals to 3. And for that, I use the expression we found in step 1. So I need to take any value of x less than 3. And the easiest option I can think of is 0. And so I go ahead and calculate f dash dash of 0. And that's equal to 6 times 0 minus 18. So that's 0 minus 18. In other words, the second derivative at 0 is equal to negative 18. And since this is negative, I write a negative sign right here. Next, I look into x values greater than 3. And any x value greater than 3 will do, but I'll go ahead and take x equals to 4. And so I evaluate the second derivative, f dash dash of x, at 4. Now that's equal to 6 times 4 minus 18, which is equal to 24 minus 18. Finally, the second derivative at 4 is equal to 6. And 6 is positive, so I can write a plus sign in my table. And we're done. This third and final step is what proves that our function f of x has a point of inflection when x equals to 3. Indeed, this table is showing us that the second derivative is equal to 0 when x equals to 3, and that it changes sign on either side of that value. In this case, it goes from negative to positive, which is confirmed on the sketch I made earlier on. The curve goes from concave down, so the second derivative is negative, reaches a point of inflection at which the second derivative is 0, and it then turns into a concave up curve, so the second derivative is positive. And there we go. We now know what points of inflection are, as well as how to find them. And that's it for this tutorial.